The children have the right and they need to have ongoing contact to father and mother after separation and divorce. And even then, it's even more important. We have a scientific approach to problem of toxic stress and adversity. Long-term uh, effects, so I mean, uh, we are talking about effects that uh, they become, they don't become uh, uh, concrete immediately, but uh, is required, uh, is expected to happen after many years. Toxic stress um, leads to uh, a very soft uh, inflammation uh, in blood vessels. In the efforts on the cortisol, uh, the stress hormone, or the oxytocin. That's why we are talking about long term consequences of toxic stress. There's not a, a typical sign because everybody uh, can have a, a, a his own typical reaction. Toxic stress change the way uh, how DNA read and transcribed. There's a high blood pressure, cancer. Heart attack in 30s. You can have anorexia, psychological or psychiatric problem. You can uh, have hormonal problems. The list just goes on and on and on. And for those with AC4 or more, the risk for heart disease is 3.6 uh, uh, times uh, higher than the control group in uh, um, other population, but not in correlation with smoking, metabolic syndrome, obesity, high blood pressure, etc. Only 10 to 15 uh, percent children have a resilience from toxic atmosphere. Abused and neglected child have symptoms of ADHD, but this is not a genuine ADHD or ADD. These uh, children have a terrible situation uh, in their home. One of the worst thing is exactly this. They become addicted to their alienating parent. Soft signs could be um, a red flag, with concentration, with a restless leg, food intake, um, with obesity, with uh, peers, with friends. If we recognize it and start with therapy, it is not a destiny. Your baby needs parents who are calm. The exorbitant cost for rent and forces them to work both very soon. When we know that toxic stress leads to health problems, to social problems, to psychological problems, and even to economic problems. In uh, parental divorce, millions and millions of, of children uh, that's why I, I'm talking uh, in all Europe about a public health problem. Relational patterns, patterns of how we deal with conflict, how we solve problems, uh, it's all inherited. We learned it from the model of our parents. That's why we are talking about of transgenerational scale of toxic stress. Many parents never spoke about what they wish for their children, what they want to contribute to this child, to the upbringing of this child, to the child's joy of life, to the child's optimism in life, to the child's trust. Very often in severe cases, we're in a position where we have a parent who is unwilling or unable to motivate behaviour change in themselves, to place the developmental needs of the child first. We can separate as a couple. We cannot separate as parents. I'm still wondering how it's possible for people with high education to not think about the consequences. Did you ever tell him or tell her how grateful you are for the gift it was a gift from your partner that this child could be born. Or if your mom or if your dad 
ask you and teach you just to hate, it's not right. It's not good for you, it's not good for the other people. You are not wondering, okay, now it's a child, but in 10 years he will become an adult. What happened then? You can celebrate it on Mother's Day. You can celebrate it on Father's Day. The important thing is your child knows my mother and fathers are happy about my existence and they are grateful to each other. And gratefulness um, prevents hatred. En fait, ce qu'on a constaté, c'est que très souvent, l'enfant s'auto-aliénait. C'est-à-dire qu'il avait tendance, par exemple, à prendre parti pour celui de ses parents qui souffre le plus, euh, pour le soutenir. Les problèmes sont normaux, les problèmes sont partie de la vie, et il y a beaucoup de moyens de les résoudre. Les parents souffrent, je ne le conteste pas. Mais la plus grande Sufferances is uh, regarding to the child because he has no control. He can do anything. So this is very painful. How should they ever believe in the continuity of human relationships if they don't practice it, if they can't live it themselves? The knowledge about the needs of children in case of separation of the parents. And the hospital offers one evening or even two evenings to teach them in breastfeeding and in changing the nappies. That's all well and good, but everybody will learn that. What I wish to be added is that the parents are taught about the needs, focusing on the attachment, on the emotional needs. We have to do better and much more for children. Also because of us. When we retired, what quality of population will have? How will be the future if you do nothing regarding to parental alienation? How will be the society if we do nothing? Mm -hmm.